Greetings. I'm going to take you through the steps I use to draw this octagon using the Vectorworks Braceworks insertion tool. This octagon is built with eight 10 foot sections of truss and eight hinged corners. Though the Vectorworks library contains this hinge, it is not adjustable. Therefore, I need to create a 45 degree version of this symbol. Here, I've drawn, started a new drawing and set the layer to half inch. From my favorites library, I'm going to import the corner block from the Thomas Tomcat 1212 plated library. Let's first take a look at this um, this block, this symbol. So we see here that it's brought in a few extra classes that is under rigging. We've got a label that we can turn on and off, and we have a simplified version that works well in a ground plan view. And with that, we add the label, and as you can see, we would definitely know what the unit was. So let's turn these off for the moment, because we're going to work with the 3D geometry. We'll take a look at it in isometric view, and let's look at OpenGL for a moment. As you can see, it's a very complex unit, and the Vectorworks people have done a terrific job at this. Um, what we need to do is we need to create our own 45 degree version of this symbol. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, make a copy of the symbol. So I'm going to go down here and duplicate the symbol, and I'm going to add 45 degrees to the end of the name. 45 degrees. So now I have another copy of this symbol down here in the resource manager. And to edit it, I'm going to open it up and click on Edit 3D Component. I right click to open this window, this menu, and now I have the 3D component. So we have here the 3D geometry. This is a generic solid. And there's a few steps to make sure that we're doing this properly. First thing is that this is the geometry of the unit itself. But there's a 3D locus here, and there's a 3D locus here. And when we rotate our unit and put make this into a 45 degree hinge, we need to make sure that this one is at the center of here, and that this one stays in the center of this end, even though it will be rotated. So to do that, I'm going to create a new center point to make sure that I'm really in the center center. So to do so, I'm going to draw a line from one 3D locus to the other. And now I'm going to put a new circle in the center of the 3D, of this line. And since I've drawn the line, I know that I can snap to the center of it. Here's the th center of some of the elements in the hinge itself. And as you'll see, there's ever so slightly off center. So that's why I'm making my own. So let's find the center of this. There's the midpoint of the line. So there is my new circle that I know is mine with its center point. Let's remove the fill. And now I can get rid of this line that I was using before. So now I have a center point of this circle that I can use. And I'm going to stick a 2D locus right there as well. There we go. Okay, now that I have a center pivot point, I can do all my pivots off of that center point for all of my future versions of this hinge. Now I need to make a bendable. Now, as you'll see, if I choose the hinge and I choose the slice tool, it doesn't uh, do anything. Right? Um, so I'm going to need to do a 3D subtraction. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I need two sides, is duplicate the object so that I have two copies of it so I can subtract it twice. Now, the simplest way of doing this is to grab a rectangle and draw a rectangle around the whole unit from one side, the part that I'm going to subtract. There we go. I'm going to extrude this, let's say uh, 24 inches. Let's take a front view of our object to make sure I'm going to subtract everything. And as you'll see from this view, the symbol is taller. It goes, but the bottom goes below zero zero. So I need to move this down just a touch. A bottom Z. Let's give it a minus uh, four. And now it's going to subtract all this stuff. So we'll go to the top. We're going to select our symbol. Modify. Yep, sorry, model. Subtract solids. And I'm subtracting this part here. And I click OK. But I'm also going to retain subtracting objects so I don't have to rebuild the extrude. There we go. So this is the part that still exists. And this is the part of the second copy that I had made. 
let's grab my uh, 3D subtraction object that I'm using. And we'll zoom in here and just subtract between. As you'll notice, I'm subtracting between this circle and this circle because I want to keep the center geometry here. So let's uh, select the, uh, the second one. See, we have this one, which is the whole unit. And then we have the new one that I created. Well, this one we're keeping. We need to subtract from this one. Subtract. And I don't need to keep the copy anymore of the subtracting object. So there it goes. Terrific. So now we have two halves. Here's the left half, and here's the right half. Okay. Let's take a look at what this looks like rotated. So I'm going to select the side, and I'm going to hit Rotate. And now I'm going to, there I am at the locus, and put a marker there, and grab this locus over here, and pull it down, and type in minus 45 for degrees. And you have to go down, by the way. This be, will be evident later when I make some Braceworks adjustments. Okay, so now I've made my 45 degree change. Oh, but I left this up here. I don't want to do that, so let's do undo. And let's grab this as well. And now we'll rotate it. And minus 45. There we go. Okay, so I have my 3D locus here, uh, which is in the center. I rotated with it. Um, I have my locus there. We've got this uh, funny little cutoff pieces here. If you really want to clean it up, you would change your original subtract shape to include half rounds. Um, but I left it here. Okay, so now I have my, my rotated part. Now we've done this to the 3D version. I'm going to right click and edit 2D component. And as you see, here's the 2D part. And it also has a locus here, the 2D locus. Let's add a pivot point here as well. We'll draw from locus to locus. And we'll add a new loci to the center, to the midpoint of my line. There we go. Now I can delete my marker line. Now this one's much easier to deal with because these are not, this is not a 3D solid um, object. These are simply 2D images, objects. So I'm going to hit rotate and I'm going to pick my locus in the center, my locus over here, point down, type in minus 45, click, and that's done. Now one more thing though is that I turned off simplified before. This is where the simplified shape lives. So I'm going to turn on the simplified layer uh, class and there's this one. So I'm going to hit rotate, Grab my locus, grab the center point, the midpoint of this, and rotate that down. There we go, hit escape, and exit symbol. Oh, by the way, um, if these two pieces are connected before you do the rotate, simply ungroup them. Occasionally they're grouped, sometimes they're not. Exit symbol. There we go. So now, let's bring in, we'll take that one out of the drawing, and we'll bring this one in. And there is our rotated unit, just like so. We'll turn off Simplified so we can see the structure. Terrific. Now we'll bring in a 10-foot piece of truss. Import. Yes. There we go. Ah. Now, if I try and join this, if I join the 10 foot piece on this side, that works all well and good, but I can't seem to join it down here. That's because Braceworks is now coming into play. Okay, if I do that, it's just going to go that way. So we need to make some changes to the Braceworks object itself. So make this easy, I'll get rid of that. And we'll come into play here. I'm going to choose this tool, choose this symbol. And in the Braceworks object info palette, uh, or the object info palette for this item, we're going to click on Draw 3D Only because that opens up some of this geometry that I can see again. And we need to make some changes. So the change we need to make is under customization. This is a corner truss, but it was it comes in as a setting for straight truss. So I need to change it to a corner truss. And this is an L corner. And in this particular drawing here, these uh, lengths here give us a hint as to what we need, to, the information we need to put in. So it's an L corner. So L1 is from the end from that point to the pivot point. So let's take a measurement of that. So I'll cancel that, and we need to put a dimension in here. So 
So we can take a measurement from here to our center point. And we'll get right in the center. Move that up. Now this is very exacting stuff. So I'm going to change my precision to 1 64th. Okay, but even better, when I enter the information, I'm going to copy the length of the line up here, 10.835 inches. So I'm going to copy that and then click in here and hit X and select my object, customize, corner truss, and L1. So I'm going to put that measurement here in L1. Okay, I'm going to click OK and apply customization. And look, it's given us this funny cross here. So the next measurement we're going to do, let's go see what the next measurement is. We need from the original insertion point down to the other insertion point. What is the height of that? So that is this measurement here. I'm going to make my life just a little bit easier and just draw a line straight over from here to there. And now I could use smart you know, cursor snapping and all that, but this is just a little bit quicker. Here, here, there we go. Precision. And I'm going to copy here. Copy the length. And this is that height. This is L2. Okay, apply. Now I need the distance from this point to this point here. So if I measure from here, I go up and I grab this corner here. Oh, I gotta turn on my snaps. There we go. Precision. Copy it from here. Customize. Here's this length here, L3. Click OK. And apply. OK, so now, just to show it to you clean, I'll grab another copy of it, because it applies it, it saves it, even though it's in the object in the uh, my library. Once you've applied it, it saves it. And now look what happens when I click on my 10-foot piece of truss. Here it goes that way, and here it goes that way. So that's how we adjusted that. So let's make our octagon now. Now look at this, when I snap to the end of this, it's asking me which direction do I want to go in. So I want to go that way. To make this faster, I'm going to do a build it from both ends. And we have the last one. There we go. Now, I will confess that I've been having a little bit of trouble getting these to actually join. Um, I've sent a note to Vectorworks asking them how to do that. Um, somewhere, the, me the, the most minute measurement is slightly off. Uh, but those are the results for my octagon. And obviously, if I um, want a basic octagon, this is how uh, we do it. Thanks for watching.